Good morning, and welcome to St. Michael's Episcopal Church in Litchfield for our Easter morning service. Those who receive our regular weekly e-blast will have gotten the service leaflet uh, in that way, and if you printed it out, you can follow along. For those of you who did not receive it, I will be, but want to follow the service in your prayer book and or hymnal, I will be announcing page numbers and hymn numbers. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn of praise is hymn 180, 180. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn is number 188. in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our sequence hymn will be 178. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, on, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. In the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity, amen. Alleluia, he is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. This is the great proclamation of Easter. After the betrayal, after the sham trial, the beatings, the shaming, and finally, the gruesome death. After his total defeat and destruction, after the loss of all things, Jesus lives. Not just in our hearts, not just in the ideas that, his, that live on through the ages, but as a total human being with a body and soul, he is risen, and he stays risen. Jesus is alive, now and always. As has often been said, the message of Easter is that the worst thing is never the last thing. Let me say that again. The worst thing is never the last thing. No matter how bad things get, there's always a new page, a new chapter. After sin comes forgiveness. After estrangement comes reconciliation. After bondage comes freedom. After injury comes healing. After death comes life. The message of Easter is that God's love conquers all. Not even death can separate us from the love of God. We are now in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. To protect as many people as possible, we are staying home 
We are avoiding contact with others. Many have lost their jobs or are furloughed. Many who must continue working are risking their health. Hospitals are filling with COVID-19 patients so that other medical needs are not being addressed. Many will die from this disease. The enemy is invisible. We never know who might be a risk to us. In the midst of all this, we hear once again the announcement of Easter. Jesus has defeated death. Jesus has reunited God and humanity. Jesus is healing the world. The kingdom of heaven has begun. Love and hope, these are the gifts that God gives us. Love and hope are also the choices that we make. Love and hope are the results of our practice. Love and hope will see us through this time of illness and death. At this time of the year, the earth itself provides a picture, a metaphor, an icon of this message. From the dead ground of winter, the daffodils, the hyacinths, and the tulips spring up and reach for the sky. For Scythia explodes along our hedges with exuberant joy. But these are mere metaphors, pictures of the reality. Resurrection is not merely a nice idea or a theological abstraction. The resurrection is a fact as real as gravity. I love this poem from John Updike called Seven Stanzas at Easter that makes this point well. Make no mistake. If he rose at all, it was as his body. If the cell's dissolution did not reverse, the molecules re-knit, the amino acids rekindle, the church will fall. It was not as the flowers, each soft spring recurrent. It was not as his spirit in the mouths and fuddled eyes of the eleven apostles. It was as his flesh, ours. The same hinged thumbs and toes, the same valved heart that pierced, died, withered, paused, and then regathered out of eternal might, new strength to enclose. Let us not mock God with metaphor, analogy, sidestepping transcendence, making of the event a parable, a sign painted in the faded credulity of earlier ages. Let us walk through the door. The stone is rolled back, not paper mache, not a stone in a story, but the vast rock of materiality that in the slow grinding of time will eclipse for each of us the wide light of day. And if we will have an angel at the tomb, make it a real angel, weighty with Max Planck's quanta, vivid with hair, opaque in the dawn light, robed in real linen, spun on a definite loom. Let us not seek to make it less monstrous for our own convenience, our own sense of beauty, lest, awakened in one unthinkable hour, we are embarrassed by the miracle and crushed by the remonstrance. That is to say, the resurrection is more real than this crummy little virus. The resurrection is mightier than our fears. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus is going before us, and we are just trying to catch up. It feels as though this year we need Easter more than usual, but actually that's not quite true, because we need Easter all the time. Every year, every month, every day, every minute, we need Easter. We need the new life, the eternal life. We need the joy that overcomes every fear. We need the life that defeats every death. 
We need the love of God that truly conquers every enemy. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Nicene Creed is on page 358 of the prayer book. 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He descended the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people will be said according to Form 6 on page 392 of the prayer book. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Ian and Laura, our bishops, Bevan, our priest, and Amy, our deacon, for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for all those on our prayer list. We pray for those who have <clears throat> the COVID-19 virus, or have been exposed to it, and those medical workers and first of <clears throat> responders who are helping the sick. Pray for, for all those facing addiction and those who come to 12-step meetings here. We pray for those <clears throat> who face hunger and are helped by our soup kitchen and food pantries. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For those who work so that, to help us, truck drivers, grocery stores, people who help us with our uh, most immediate needs. We will exalt you, O God, our King, We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. 
Let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I want to take a moment here just to say some thank yous. Uh, thank you particularly to our musicians, Mark Johnson and Daniel Skiffo, for our videographers, Michelle and Rick Kinraid, and for our reader, Alinda Stanley. And through these week and, uh, past weeks, and especially during this Holy Week, a huge uh, thanks to many people who've helped with uh, with technology in various different formats and running various experiments uh, and um, putting these together so you can uh, participate and share in our worship even at a distance. There's Shelley King and uh, Audrey Terhune uh, in particular, um, but there also, and Denise Butwell have all been particularly helpful in, in this effort. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The offertory hymn is number 210. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
The Great Thanksgiving continues on page 361 of the prayer book, 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. It is right. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sanctified, sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name, Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Gifts of God, for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
The post-communion prayer will be the one on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithfulness of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from, the sin, from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is number 207.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.